Okay, two more minutes. Hmm. Almost there. Here we go. Let's see, I'm really lucky. City of ten thousand Buddhas. Dharma rain. Okay. One more minute. Let's see, Amitabha. Find the true. Pong song, homage to Guan Yin, stupid thoughts. <laughs> We're getting a tour of DRBA's first English language Buddhist songbook. Ah, it's here somewhere. Birth and Death Blues, three for one. Where is the treasure? Ballad of the Dharma Doctor. Oh my goodness. Oh, man. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Okay. That's where we go. We are 14 seconds away from goal.
Namu tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambu tassa. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo sadanto suchedoye olahadi sammyao samputoshe. Wu shang shen shen wei miao fa. By Qian Wan Jie Nan Sao Yu, Wo Jin Jian Wan De Shou Chi Yan Jie Ru Lai Zhen Shi Yi, Supreme and Wondrous Dharma, Subtle and Profound, rarely is encountered even in billions of eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. 师父上人，各位师兄，大家阿弥陀佛 ，Venerable Master, Dharma friends, welcome to our Sutra lecture tonight. Glad that you're here.、Uh, we've got folks from all over the planet tonight, and we're here. It is Friday, December twenty-second, here in the Gold Coast of Queensland, and we are going to. This is our Last night of a week of reciting the Buddha's name and reciting the Sutra of the Buddha Amitabha,、uh, we are practicing a method of Buddhism called devotion. This is、uh, based on a story, and the story is about the Pure Land.、Uh, it's a story that the Buddha at one point told his disciples. You all don't know. About this, I'm going to tell you a story you haven't heard before. And after he told the story, he said, "You know what? That's going to be hard for you to believe, but you should believe it because it's true. It's a true story, and it's a good one. It's a really good story. And we've, as I've said multiple times this week, all religions whatsoever proceed from stories. They all start with a story. And if the person telling you the story is a person of authority, Somebody, a power figure, male or female,、uh, east or west.、Uh, if if it's you, have to believe that story for some reason because that person's the authority. Then that's how religions get spread. So,、um, interestingly, I think this is really a fascinating point that I'd like to make before we get started, which is that this may be the only time. In the Buddha's forty-nine-year、uh, teaching career, that he said, "Take it on my word. Trust me." Everything else, every other teaching he gave, he said, "Don't take it from me. Test it out yourself. You, if, if you like it, if it works for you, it's yours. Public domain, Creative Commons license. It's all yours.、Uh, this is the only time." That he said, "You should actually just take my word for it." Is this teaching about Amitabha and the Pure Land? So that's what we're studying. That's what we're celebrating. That's what we're learning about together, and also mutually encouraging each other to to practice this method. So let's continue.、Uh, we've got a few more bits of protocol to go through here. We'd like to respectfully acknowledge the Kumbu Mary people of the Ugambi language region here, as traditional storytellers and custodians of the land where this monastery is located. We pay respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, to all First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. So, we are acknowledging the Ugambi Ugambi people, the Kumbu Mary people, who are the ancestors of the land and the traditions of the Kumbu Mary people. 我们向过去、现在和未来的长者们致敬，并且向所有未放弃主权的第一民族的原住民致敬。And because the same、uh, slideshow of Dharma request works for indigenous folks in Northern California. 
the Pomo people from Mendocino County, as well as the Ohlone people of Alameda County and San Francisco County. So we use it three different lecture communities. So here's our bell song. This is how we conclude our opening ceremony. The bell sound wide resounds throughout a hundred million worlds. The Buddha's law is heard and spread all throughout the triple world. The wondrous sounds that everywhere fill the Dharma realm with peace. May those who hear it gain the strength to follow in faith the Buddha's path. For fa zhong sheng chuan san qian jie nei, for fa yang wan yi guo zhong. Okay, there we go. All done. Now, um, everybody can put the palms down. Okay. Um, we, I want to show everybody where you can go if you would like to learn more about Pure Land teachings from an expert. That would be our teacher, our founder, Master Shrenhua. Uh, we have here online, oops, hmm, Buddha Hall, that's what I want. Gonna switch links here, there we go. So if you, let me put that link in the chat, and maybe our SISOP can pass that on to everybody. Okay, there it is. Click on that link, and it will take you here to English language Dharma talks, Pure Land Dharma talks. This is these are talks given by Master Shenhua back in the days of early. Gold Mountain Monastery in San Francisco, where we were just getting our feet wet in Pure Land practice. We're just learning a little bit about it. Um, take a look when you go down to the bottom. These are all the pages linked. So there's many, many, many. Let's go up to the to the last page, twenty five. Chan Dharma Talks, Volume Two. So. This is uh, collected talks by Master Shrenhua on Pure Land and Chan. So I want to uh, show folks where you can go if you would like to learn more about the Pure Land. Now, this is English language. Where do you go if you want this in Chinese? You go to drba chinese.org here it is this is our chinese language website and you go to the menu here and you go uh, online reader and here you are presented with all of master shenhua's teachings that he gave over a 30-year period in chinese oh my goodness and up here are Shrenhua Shang and Kaishi Lu, Master Shrenhua's Dharma Talks. And there are six volumes of Chinese only. There are 10 volumes of Chinese English bilingual and all of Shrufu's talks. So I'll put that in line also. Go check it out and enjoy. For folks who want to learn more and not take it from me, but take it from the source, there you go. Okay, one is English, one is Chinese. All righty. Here we go. Now, last night, uh, halfway through, we encouraged folks to type in questions. 
And by the way, we're now up to 64 friends from all over from Brazil to Vietnam to every place in China, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, Sydney, uh, Vancouver, Los Angeles, and, and elsewhere. Late in, in yesterday, we encouraged folks to type in questions, and we got a lot, a lot of questions. And I was asked, at, just at the end of lecture, people said, hey, you didn't invite us here, our living flesh and blood folks, to ask their questions. So to correct that oversight, who's got a question? We'll give you priority, and then we'll go to the questions online. Of which there's some very interesting ones. Who's got a question? Okay, question. Now, I need to tell you that my ears are just not what they used to be. So you're going to have to speak slowly and loudly. Amitofo. Um, 这问题是来自于那个, uh, Michael. 他有参加了我们的, uh, 念佛的法会. 那他有告诉我说, 当我们在念佛之后, 开始会存在在一个意识还保留, <笑> 我念阿依多福是还是一样可以到西方极乐世界去的呢? Okay, can you translate yourself for everybody? Can you, can you translate in English for yourself? Everybody? Yeah. That's okay, I'm sure everybody would love to hear from... from... Oh, yeah, you, you ask for Michael. Michael, Michael could you, you ask it yourself? Can you, can you... That would be good. I don't know what she said. Oh, you're, you're responsible for every word of it, too. We will certainly sue you for every word. No, we're, we're really relaxed around here, as so, you know. So. As far as I know, it's that once you recite the name Nam Namo Amitofo, yeah. um, at the beginning, everything is very clear and everybody has a nice rhythm. But then at one point when the mind wanders off, Suddenly the sound changes, and you might not hear Namo Amitofo, but Yum Yum Aitofo. Yeah, um, Yum Yum Ice Cream, I love. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Namo, I love tofu. Namo, I, I like love tofu. tofu. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think Lydia's questions about that was that if you recite it in that way, it's clearly not the way it was intended. So, so what? Does so that what still then? count in a way, or? Is that still appropriate and will it be accepted, so to speak? Got I it. guess that's, that's how I would understand what the Got question it. Good is. question. Yeah. And that's, it's a, uh, I think you're representing lots and lots and lots of folks for whom this is a new practice who might have identical questions. So um, here's the way I think about it. The, in the, uh, these hour talks that I've given, this is number seven. Uh, I haven't been exhaustive in presenting all the different options for practice. I've just kind of tops of the waves, you know, just kind of uh, given a summary, more or less. And I have also not been systematic. If, you, if, you're, if you're curious, if this method appeals to you, I really recommend you go out to that online resource. Because Master Hua, back in the early 70s, when he presented it, those talks were all recorded, and he was very systematic. He really did it from start to finish, because he wanted us to, to pick it up. Um, so among the methods that he outlined um, are some that include not only namo ami tofo, but also involve visualization. So if you're visualizing Amitabha, the idea is you're uh, saying the name, but you're also looking at, in your mind, you're visualizing mm. 
something that looks like this. Your, uh, you have in your, in your mind, in your mind's eye, something that looks, that's a small one. Let's get a nice bright one. There's so many, so many images of Amitabha. That's a small one too. Let's see. Uh, yeah. There's, let's see here. Ah, they're all small. Anyway, let's go look. So as you recite Namo Amitofo, your mind's eye is visualizing something like this. And Dakai app, no thank you. Um, so there's no ambiguity here. It's clearly, this is the one you mean, no matter how you call him. Uh, so that helps the visualization at the same time that you recite. Here's another Amitabha. Here's another Amitabha. Uh, here he is seated. Here he is standing. So that method co combines, uh, you know, ear and eye. So that helps. Um, but I would like to, and I told the story uh, last night, was it, or the night before, about my going to Shanghai to Dragonflower Monastery and a place where monks came from all over China with everybody bringing a different dialect, a different regional dialect. And some saying fo, very proper Mandarin, some saying fut, Southern Mandarin, some saying fu, you know. And when they, when they recited in the morning, uh, Namo is pretty much the same, but when they got to the end, it was Namo Amito, kind of a nasal honk, and that covered everything, you know. So how precise is that? Not at all. And yet it worked because they could all chant together. That was really nice. So, but this, I think, is the key moment for talking about precision in pronunciation, which is are we concerned that Amitabha's ears are not going to hear us or that he might be confused by my mispronunciation? That's the wrong place to look because why? What matters is here. When you turn it around, let's say your recitation of Amitabha is sufficient to take you to the Pure Land. How many recitations is that a million two million ten million it's not externally focused it's in the mind and so much of buddhism is important if you really want to understand the dharma that flip that 180 degree flip is really important because why we are not a theistic tradition there's no theos out there there's no supreme being who has to please be pleased with us and give us grace to save us amitabha yes of all buddhism amitabha is the most theistic seeming of of our of the teachings but if you think about chan meditation if you think about virtue it all focuses here and it starts here in the mind so with that if if that is the case then what matters most is what are you doing with your mind when you say i love tofu or omi tofu you know really doesn't matter how, how your mouth pronounces it you know so what else do we do uh, i started out this week by by doing this Somewhere here, there's carols. Right. I started out by doing this. Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Amitabha Buddha, Namo Amitabha Buddha. Right? 
Namo Amitabha, Namo Amitabha. That's not Amitofo. It's Sanskrit, but it's, quote, English. So people go, oh, you were chanted in English. No, it's Sanskrit, but it's how people who are used to English syntax and, and phonemes are going to say Amitabha. We're not going to say Amitofo. You know? So right away, the question, your question is right there in that. So, so we hope that the Buddha, that Amitabha speaks and understands English. Otherwise, we're in trouble, right? <laughs> well, it's all been a waste, right? So, yeah, you have to figure the Buddha's pretty much tuned in to us. So, on the other hand, I like precision. I'm a linguist. I like to be, know what I'm saying. So, that's a good question. And if, you're, if your mind is a million miles away, or you're cynical, or you're laughing at it, you don't really believe it, then, of course, it doesn't matter how you say it. You can be really precise, but it's not going to connect. So, Hayona Hayoshe, Hayosh Monti. Anybody else? Questions? Nope. Yin Yong's got the look that I'm, I'm used to people going, don't ask me, no questions. <laughs> okay. Questions will come up, and as they do, raise your hand. Last night, Tian Yue Shan Chi. Wow, they were listening to my singing, and they said, "You have this is a sacred tune of celestial music." How about that? So, 法师唱的歌很好听，谢谢。So, if um, people would like to have more Buddhist songs to listen to, please go out to dharmaradio.org. Go there, Dharma Radio. I'm going to put that in the chat. Dharma Radio. There it is. And there has been a critical error on the website. Oh no! Samaban, ami tofu. Hey Jerry, if you're listening, learn more. Chi whiz WordPress. Um, that happened to me earlier this week. WordPress kicked me off. Hmm. Was. Yeah, yeah. Our 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 website, GCDR, was WordPress. What's going on with WordPress? Huh? Okay. I was going to send you out to DharmaRadio.org, and we will fix it, and then go out to Dharma Radio. Because why? Our my website um, will give you. We send you CDs of Buddhist music in exchange for good deeds. We call it good karma music. Has anybody done that? Anybody done a good deed and downloaded a CD? Nobody. Sam has. Okay. Whoa! I've got to get you guys on the stick. So you do a good deed, then you type it in and tell us what you did. And the good deed is entirely your definition of a good deed. You can help an old Buddhist across the street, you know, or you can feed feed the the cockatoos or whatever you do. Then type it in. Tell us what you did, and you can do it in English or Chinese or Vietnamese, Japanese, and then you get to pick from、uh, Paramita American Buddhist Folk Songs, or Dharma Radio American Buddhist Folk Songs Volume Two, or Buddhist Stories, or we have something really special. We have Father Cyprian Concilio, who is a Benedictine Catholic monk. Who has,、uh, who graciously gave us three of his songs to、uh, to include on Dharma Radio for、uh, let's see, Cyprian for good deeds. He supported our project, and let's see if we can. Here we go.、Uh, let's see. This is my library. I want. There it is. Uh, including uh, 
Cyprian's version of my song, which I'm delighted, Dedication of Merit. His latest is Hermit Preacher Wanderer. That's his newest one. Um, one of my very favorites of his, listen to this one. Oh, it's not going to play because, yeah, it's going to be it's complicated because I'm into Zoom. So anyway, uh, Father Cyprian's songs are there on Dharma Radio. Wonderful to listen to. Uh, highly recommend it. So do more good deeds. The best part is the good deeds are preserved and you can read them. We have over 500 now, people who have done good deeds, including one guy from, from Beijing who said, I didn't do any good deed. I just wanted the music. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. All kinds of people. Ami Tofu, Ding Li Hong Shi, Fa Shi, Di Zi, Kun Qing, Kai Shi, Wen Ti Shi, Ru Guo Mei Tian, Dou Ren Zhen Nian, Fo Qi Lo Shi Jie, Ke Yi Ti Qian Qu Ma, Ke Yi Ti Qian Qu Ma. Wow. Bi Ru Ban Lai Ming Shu Yao, Liu Shi Ba Sui, Nian Fo Te Li Wu Shu Wu Sui, Ke Yi Wang Sheng Di Lo Shi Jie Ma. 哇，这个人谈快 ，instant， 立刻，立刻往生 ，right？ 阿弥陀佛 ，Dharma Master， bow to Dharma Master Hung Shi。Uh, your disciple wants to know if I am really vigorous in reciting the Buddha's name, can I go to Amitabha's Pure Land early? Can I get in the fast lane? For example, if I'm supposed to live to be 68 and I recite really well, can I go when I'm 55? We want bargains everywhere. So um, number one is I'm not a lawyer, and number two, I'm not the gatekeeper of the Pure Land. But what I would say is, why wait till you're 55? Be really sincere and go now. Why not? I mean, what are you waiting for, right? Somehow it's like this question means that. You're still giving power to someone else, and the way I understand Amitabha set it up is he wants to empower us. Amitabha is not the gatekeeper; he's not the power guy, and we're still. This question is still negotiating with the cops, you know, negotiating with a trial lawyer, negotiating with the judge. It's still theistic. This is still the powers outside you. Amitabha set it up for us to get to the pure land as soon as we are a hundred percent sincere. Yi Shin Bulan, recite until you are single-minded. Why aren't we single-minded now? Is the question I would ask. I mean, for my case, it's because my mind is still confused. I still have lots of thoughts of self and others, rights and wrongs. But this, I want to turn this question right back on the questioner and say, why wait till you're fifty-five? If you understand the method, go now. Be sincere. Recite till you are single-minded. Don't don't look at Amitabha. He set up the method, and if you really use it, use it. Go. It's just that we're still eh, we still want to hang around in the kitchen in case there's something good to eat. You know, maybe I'll recite when I'm old. You know. Okay. 师法师，阿弥陀经讲阿弥陀佛，究竟成佛一时节？这个时节指的是极乐世界的时间，还是娑婆世界的时间？因为《华严经》讲的极乐世界时间和我们娑婆世界有不同。Where I would like to know where 在《华严经》哪里这么说呢？啊，就比如天上的时间和人间的时间不同一样。打这个妄想好几天了，所以得到答案就把这个妄想取消了。Oh, thank you. Uh, you're wait. You're putting the pressure, the power on me to get rid of your false self. Ah,、uh, the Amitabha Sutra says that Amitabha has been a Buddha for ten eons. The ten eons mentioned in the sutra says the questioner.、Uh, I'd like to know: Is that Pure Land timetable or? Human saha were our timetable. The Avatamsaka Sutra says Pure Land time and our time are different. My question to you is: Please tell me where in the Amitabha in the Avatamsaka Sutra it says that. I'd like to know. I, I'm not familiar with that. 
So if, uh, so if, if the times are different, uh, I really would like to know because I've had this false thought for a long time and if you can answer it, I won't have to have this false thought. So I have the power to increase your false thoughts or decrease them. All right. So um, my answer is the same. Why do you need to know this? This is totally, totally a branch tip issue. In the end, knowing the answer to this will not further your recitation in the slightest. Okay, you say you're false thinking because you wonder about this. Well, yeah, I'm curious too. You are a curious person and inquiring minds want to know. Sure, we all are. However, Amitabha would probably, you know, uh, disregard your question as frivolous. Uh, even if you knew that, it wouldn't help you at all in getting to the pure land. I'll tell you what, if you get rid of your false thoughts yourself that will get you to the pure land sooner you can ask amitabha yourself don't ask me ask him right to his face come on let's go get to the pure land uh, let's see the question is how many songs have you sung or written i guess here's my song folder here and it contains 438 but a lot of those are rep repetitive however lots of them are in folders um my recent best songs are i think song of enlightenment is about the best one recently um song of enlightenment finished recently Did it? Let's see. Song of Enlightenment. Um, it because of why? Sixty-three verses, and uh, people remember. An example this one hasn't we haven't recorded the song of enlightenment yet but it's on the way i was actually going to record it here over at george's that that hasn't happened yet um song of enlightenment let's see where are we we uh there's the essay essay material let's see here comment html Uh, here we go. Give an example. So there's the, uh, we're in the process. Here's an example. The, um, in the verse, ah, the mighty hero holds aloft his wisdom blade. From its brilliant prajna edge comes adamantine flames. Heretics and disbelievers fall to every side. Demons of the heavens look for a place to hide. Da Jiang Fu, Ping Hui Jian, Bo Ruo Feng Xi, Jin Gang Yan, Fei Dan, Kong Lao Zong, Wai Dao Xin, Sao Tong Luo Chue, Tian Mo Dan. Sixty-three verses is a lot of song. And certainly nobody wants to listen that long. You'd have to bring your sleeping bag and we still wouldn't finish it. Listen to the lion's roar of fearless, awesome sound. 
The birds and bees all terrified tremble on the ground. Everybody panics, they lose their awesome style. The gods and dragons in samadhi listen and they smile, right? So that's one. That's, uh, that was an accomplishment. We worked on that for years. So a lot, uh, a lot of songs. Coming back to questions. Uh, let's see here. There was a very interesting question coming right up here. Maybe. Is the eighth consciousness the same thing as the soul? Uh, if you can tell me what the soul is, then I'll tell you whether it's the same as the eighth consciousness. These terms are all uh, imprecise, and yet it's fascinating because why we've all got one. How many people feel that their, their dog uh, has a soul? People say, oh, my dog is an old soul. Um, when I look in my dog's eyes, I just feel like I've known them forever. Right? Well, what are we talking about? Good question. I don't think anyone has actually answered that. I mentioned the other night uh, the Trobriand Islanders, this uh, anthropological survey. This particular, this guy named Malinowski uh, did research, and the Trobriand Islanders, this quote, primitive society, saw something at death leave the body. He said it was white and it flew up out of the body. There are other groups that weigh the, the person on their deathbed and then they weigh them an hour later as they die and they discover they're what 30 grams lighter and so oh, you know so the soul weighs 30 grams okay so in other words we're fascinated with this question of what is it inside what animates this they call it the bag of skin Stinking corpse. Is it the soul? Is it the consciousness? What do we call it? Good question. So, uh, the Buddha called it the eight consciousness, um, called it the Jung Yin Shan, the, the intermediate Skanda body. So, all different kinds of names for it. But I think we need to actually open our wisdom eye before we can say precisely what it is. Certainly, it's worth investigating, and I'm fascinated by it. Hang Shifa Shi Gong Jing, I am a spiritual teacher. Now, through music, 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 当事人的过去记忆都反亮出来 那是一些好的方式。问题，第一个问题，这个过程怎么用阿拉雅诗怎么去了解呢？怎么呃去解释？第二个问题，是不是阿拉雅诗的里面种子可以放出来啊？去面对它，然后放下新的种子，怎么理
and then they paint. They, they represent what they're hearing. And the Bhattama and Sri Gautri, mostly things that they have gone through in their own past, they're able to portray on paper uh, or digitally, doesn't say how. So the point, the thing that happens is their memories come forward on the paper. Um, and then the next step in the process is that we uh, investigate these problems together. We discuss them, or there's a method. And uh, as the individuals renew their awareness, their consciousness of issues they have gone through in the past, they are able to take a new approach to them. They engage them fresh. And it's a, um, this renewing of their consciousness of their past helps them to actually change. And there it's a, a helpful new approach to issues. My questions are, and the, the I don't know, he or she um, are attempting to put this, look through a Buddhist lens at this, uh, this therapy. So the question is, um, should I try to understand this in terms of the Alaya consciousness, the storehouse consciousness, the eighth consciousness? And um, if the seeds of the Alaya consciousness are come forward and we can face them, um, what Ranho Bo Sha Shinda, what does this do for the planting of new seeds in the consciousness? Okay, so this is very interesting and I, I don't know, uh, I, I deleted the name, so these would be anonymous questions, but I don't recall where this, this is a very interesting experimental technique of psychotherapy involving art and music. Um, if you told me that you were in Berkeley, California, I would say, right, this sounds about right. Because this, is, this is a very experimental technique, very uh, progressive. Um, and if it's being done in China, that's tremendous. Now, the attempt to correlate it through a Buddhist lens has to be speculation. We, we can uh, speculate, meaning we can propose a theory, maybe. The best we can get to is maybe. Uh, if it works and you can develop it this way, um, then to say this is a Buddhist method, is it the eighth consciousness we're dealing with? So here's the issue. The, th the theoretical model of the mind is not universally shared in Buddhism. We're working with a theory called Vijnana Vadan, Wei Shi Zong, it's called in Chinese, consciousness only. This was a method developed late in the Tang Dynasty, particularly by Master Xuanzang. He was who our pilgrim went to India. Um, he used a text, a commentary, called the Yogacara Bhumi Shastra, the Shirdi Lun. And he, he really, he brought it, he went to India, brought it back, translated it, and then propagated it. And from his teaching, the consciousness only school developed. So if you go and ask monks in Thailand, they will say, it doesn't exist. Sorry, the eighth consciousness, we stop at six, right? So I'm saying there's only a partial, uh, only certain Buddhists, uh, even you know, recognize eighth consciousness. So this is not a universal uh, approach. However, it's fascinating, and I'm uh, the idea is it says that the eighth consciousness is a like a storehouse, like a repository, like a closet where every action that we have done, past, present, and will do, goes to a certain place called the storehouse consciousness. Seeds that are invisible, don't weigh anything, no color, no velocity, but these seeds, they're totally vital and alive, 
they plant themselves in the eighth consciousness. This is where karma is kept. So good deeds go there. Harmful deeds go there. If someone who has come to this therapist for therapy listens to music and then paints or draws or uses an iPad with an iPad crayon and can able to draw them out, is, do those, are those, where are those images coming from? The answer is, I don't know. And you know what? Neither do you. But it's really interesting to think about it. And if the patient, by being able to consciously engage with aspects of the past, that's helpful. Anything that kind of, you know, that's what Freud, Freud was trying to do that. Freud was in his talking cure, getting wealthy Jewish women in Vienna to talk about their past. And he was among the very first to ever do that. So it's a wholesome activity. Now, my challenge to this therapist is this. Suppose the person is able to pull an image out of their past and face it. Then what? Has anything, you say it, it allows them to uh, they're able to change. If you really want to bring the benefits of the Buddhist, the Buddha Dharma to bear on this, what I would like to see would be giving the patient a new way to deal with the experiences that they experience. Bringing the, the events up from the past is one thing, but what if something awful comes up that you really don't want to acknowledge and you throw it back into the shadow where it's denied or you know you're in denial about it nothing much has changed if on the other hand you can say ah i am in touch with the contents of my mind that's a good thing once i acknowledge those my ability to do things that are horrible, once I face off the fact that I, I'm a rotten person occasionally and I'm a good person other times, the contents of my mind and my body and my mouth from now on, I promise I will not kill anymore. I promise I will never steal again. I promise I will be true to my commitments in relationship. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to be promiscuous. I promise I will not lie. I will tell the truth from now on. I promise I will not harm myself with intoxicants and delay my wisdom because I'm putting all kinds of stuff in my bloodstream, right? Substance abuse. So if, if you can get the, the patient to, to acknowledge that, they're, that now that I'm getting in touch with my, myself, I'm not going to hurt anymore, simplify it. Just say, Ahimsa, buhai, no harm. I'm going to live harmlessly. What do I mean harmlessly? If I don't want it done to me, I'm not going to do it to others. Right there, that's progress. Right? If you can get your patients to live by the golden rule, you've really, really given them a whole new standard by which to judge the contents of the mind that come up. But if you've only opened like opened a, a spigot, opened a tap to the contents of the mind, but nothing else changes, then going forward, no change. So that's my suggestion. I think this is very interesting. And for us to say, yes, it is the Alaya consciousness, well, what then? So what? <laughs> Again, you still have to, to bring it home. You have to own it. The Buddha Dharma is there, but mostly we're, we kind of like... We're tourists in the Buddha's wisdom. We're, we're shoppers. We go buy a little bit. Uh, turn, maybe I can return it for a refund. You know, we're we're still shopping. So take it on, make it yours, make it real, and then you got something valuable. And what do I mean? Start with harmlessness. If I don't want it done to me, I'm not going to do it to others. Good start. And the Buddha was really specific. He was not murky. He said, "Cherish life." Cherish possessions, 
Cherish your relationships. They're priceless. Don't cheat. Cherish integrity. Your word should be your bond. And cherish wisdom. Those fundamentals, every major religion in the world agrees. Those fundamentals. The, the intoxicants one is particularly Buddhist, but the killing, stealing, lust, and lying, it's in the Ten Commandments, it's in the Quran, it's in yoga's aphorisms of Patanjali, you know. So let's stop goofing around and get serious about our lives. That is probably the number one question. Question is, how do I get rid of my false thoughts? When I recite the mantra, I get all kinds of false thoughts. What do I do? Right. Welcome to the mind. You know, you, you all know about Fibber McGee's closet, remember? Fibber McGee? No, you don't? So why not? Fibber McGee and Molly was one of America's first radio shows. It was at a time when radio was brand new in America. I don't know if it ever came to Australia, but there's probably an equivalent. So Fibber McGee and Molly, it was, uh, they, they were an old couple on the vaudeville circuit, and they went to Chicago, and there was one powerful radio station that went out from Chicago and picked up and all the way to Nebraska and all the way to, to uh, Virginia. And so... The Fibber McGee and Molly was a radio play. I think it started 10 minutes and it played every day at lunch when the workers came in off the field. And uh, the running joke was Fibber was the husband and he would look for something and he would say, I wonder if it's in my closet. And Molly would say, Fibber, don't open that door. And he would open his closet door. And then stuff would come falling out of the closet onto his head for a minute while everybody across America was, ha, 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 he's just, he never sorts his closet. You know, and in the radio station, they, they had a whole tub full of junk that they would drop. And so that sounded like they made sound effects. This is pioneering radio back in the days when radio was brand new. So Fibber McGee and Molly, and he never learned. He always opened the closet door, stuff fell out on his head. That's the mind. That's the mind. And when we go in and recite a mantra, namo hula nano dola ye ye, we discover that we haven't cleaned our closet. We haven't sorted out our closet. It's full of stuff and it lands on our head. It's dirty in there until we what? Go in and clean it out. And Fibber McGee and Molly lasted years on the radio. I don't know if he ever really finally cleaned out his closet. But for sure, if we recite a mantra or the Buddha's name or a sutra, anything that we put in our mind from the Buddha's teaching, bit by bit by bit, it cleans up. And pretty soon we recite that mantra and we can tell fewer false thoughts, even to the point where by reciting, there's stillness and purity, and the mind starts to shed light. And then, that's just the start. What's the point of that? The point of that is anything that we do with a concentrated mind, we do better. Like listening to friends, listening to our partners, performing without lapses, Anything, you know, test taking tests, applying for fellowships, doing our taxes, remembering shopping lists, just listening to friends. They will comment that they like to talk to us because they really feel like we were there with them. Why? We weren't processing our stuff. Our stuff had been processed by reciting the mantra. So if we never open the closet door, we don't know what's behind there. Once we open the closet door, once we put the mantra in our mind, oh, we discover, whoa, a lot of false thinking, right? And if you don't clean up your mind, who's going to do it for you? Who's going to do it for me? Nobody. I have to do it myself. But the benefit of the Buddha, Buddha's teaching is that by any of these methods, we will clean up the mind. It responds. It becomes a clean, well-lighted place where it is safe to go. And there's actually wisdom and kindness there. 
fact, you won't find it anywhere else other than that place. So the sooner we get to work with our mantra, the sooner those false thoughts go away. Okay, now there's a bunch of questions. Look at everybody's questions here. I won't have time to get to them. Tonight's questions, I will save them. Save them, right? Save the chat. And if you stick around, I'll tell you what, here's the deal. These, I'm sure these are all good questions. Come back on, today is Friday, tomorrow is Saturday. Come back on Sunday and during lecture. Oh, so tune in to the same Gold Coast Dharma Realm um, Zoom channel. And Sunday at 1.30 this time, which is 11.30 a.m. Uh, in China, Taiwan. Uh, it is 7.30 p.m. in California. Come back and we'll look into your questions. These are really good. I so much appreciate folks writing in. Uh, we have had a fine Amitabha session here at the Gold Coast. And stay tuned. gcdr.org.au is the place to find out what's going on here. And I want to advertise one. Take a look here. New Year's. Sharangama Mantra Recitation. Uh, make a wish and ring the bell here. This is the one time, one day of the year that the neighbors have to put up with our bell. Boom. Then we're going to recite the Sharangama Mantra for 12 hours. Um, go here to find out more details. gcdr.org.au All righty. Here's an example. Okay, so uh, we are going to dedicate merit, followed by the last Da um, Hui Xiang, the last great transference. So, did I leave anybody hanging with no opportunity to ask questions? You're all happy? Michael asked. Okay. Can we make a wish? Uh, the uh, death toll in Gaza has surpassed 20,000. That doesn't include the ones under the rubble that we haven't pulled out yet. And that doesn't include the waterborne illnesses to come and starvation. So we can definitely dedicate merit to folks who are suffering age old enmity talk about the karma being created every minute here we go As one and radiant with light, share the fruits of peace with hearts of goodness, luminous and bright. If people hear and see, our hands and hearts can find giving unity. May our minds away to great compassion, wisdom, and to joy. May kindness find reward. May all who sorrow leave their grief and pain. May this boundless light Dispel the darkness of our endless night Because our hearts are one This world of pain turns into paradise 
May all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. Okay, now before we quit, we're going to invite you to bow to the Buddha if you want to do that. First bow, second bow, and third bow. Bow in respect to the Venerable Master. Alrighty, that's going to do it for us. Stick around for the Great Transference. Amitwofo, everybody. Come back on Sunday for answers to your questions. Stay for the Why not? It's a it's a cool experience. You should. <laughs> uh, just put it on top of the um, book. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, sorry,
请翻开一百四十九页 ，page one forty nine， one four nine。彼此中的恩贤是生死反复追，葬身中路会流到苦不可言。
sang ai ami thua pho yuan xia ying quan yin can lu sa wu to shi zi jin tai an wo zu
观世音菩萨，万一之精神，遍法界菩萨摩诃萨。一心定力，西方安乐度，大势至菩萨，无边光之身，遍法界菩萨摩诃萨。一心定力，西方安乐度，清净大海中，满分而延伸，遍法界生中。南无西方极乐世界大慈大悲大愿大力天引导师阿弥陀佛。南无西方极乐世界大慈大悲大愿大力接引导师阿弥陀佛。南无西方极乐世界大慈大悲大愿大力，接引导师阿弥陀佛。南无西方极乐世界，万一之精神，观世音菩萨摩诃萨。南无西方极乐世界。万一之精神，观世音菩萨摩诃萨。南无西方极乐世界。万一之精神，观世音菩萨摩诃萨。南无西方极乐世界。无边光之身，大势至菩萨摩诃萨。南无西方极乐世界，无边光之身。大势至菩萨摩诃萨，南无西方极乐世界无边光之身，大势至菩萨摩诃萨。南无西方极乐世界，满分而延伸，清净大海中。
โคสาโมหะสาน้ำมโอสิฟังจิลสุจิมันฟันเอร์ยันเชนจิงจิงตาหายจงผู้สามโมหะสาน้ำมโอสิฟังจิลสุจิมันฟันเอร์ยันเชนจิงจิงตาหายจงผู้สามโมหะสาจิสิบแปดเย่ please turn to page one fifty eight one hundred fifty eight ติ่งลีสี่เทียนตุงตุลีไตจูชื่อ天下红中燕郊，诸大山之时，顶立诸诸庐山东岭，远观大雪。林里二柱长安光明，道公大师。林里三柱南岳破坐，远公大师。顶礼是诸五台诸灵照公大师，顶礼五
住心定无龙康功大师。定力六祖行坐用命受功大事，定力七祖行坐造清长功大事。定力八祖杭州运气红功大师，定力九祖北天木林风虚空大师。定力是主于山普人持功大事，定力是一主杭州梵天仙功大事。定力是诸红罗子不心功大事，定力是三祖苏州灵眼生亮阴功大事。定力是施主江西镇若云宫大师，定力古今莲师宗师。定力主机和尚，请翻开一百五十六页。Please turn back to page one five six one fifty six, the bottom. 个人代为父母，师长激励结怨亲离，佛三拜。现在者，正福延寿；过去者，求生净土。阿弥陀佛。求生净土，阿弥陀佛。求生净土。定力老和尚
Oh. 